We're talking sleepers today, and let's just dive right in. My first guy, my first sleeper for the 2023 fantasy football season is the one and the only James Cook. Uh, James Cook was selected at the end of the second round in the 2022 NFL draft. So the draft capital is there, you know. Sure, you'd love it if he was a first-round pick, but the guy has the draft capital and he has the skill. Um, Singletary... And I was ahead of him last year when he was a rookie. He is now gone. Yes, enter Damian Harris. I understand that he's there. Um, however, if given the chance to take over the lead back role, I believe James Cook will explode. He was a top 15 running back in week 13 with 14 carries for 64 yards and six catches for 41 yards. He totaled 108 yards and a score on just 11 carries and a catch against the Bears in week 16 last year. Yeah. So Who didn't just, score on the Bears, just to be fair? <laughs> Let's throw, let's just for clarification. But he showed signs of explosiveness and he was super efficient, averaging almost six yards per carry. His 5.3 true yards per carry were second among all running backs. Almost six and a half yards per touch was third, and a more than 12% breakaway run rate was first among all running backs. Truly just showing how explosive the guy is. And we talk about opportunity. Opportunity is the biggest thing for success for running back this year. Naheem Hines just came out, suffered a season-ending knee injury while sitting on a stationary jet ski. I don't Rough. know how that happens. Uh, the team and Hines are going back and forth on compensation disagreements for the rest of the year as it was a non-football injury. But again, paving the way for James Cook because – I swear, when they traded for Naheem Hines at the end of last season, right up at the trade deadline, everybody thought James Cook was going to lose some touches and catch opportunities and whatnot to Hines. And now you don't even have to worry about that being a narrative for this season. Um, maybe the one boogeyman, which is why we always say, you know, draft as close to this, the season starting as possible is the potential for Buffalo to sign another running back. Uh, James Cook's brother, Dalvin, did mention the possibility of signing with the Bills in order to play with his brother on the Rich Eisen uh, show. So if that happened, OK, maybe James Cook's value would be torpedoed. But assuming that it is a run of the mill signing if anything, if they even add anyone, I am all in on James Cook. He's one of, if not the most explosive back in the league. He just needs opportunity. McDermott really kind of hates on rookies. I was not surprised at all last year that he never really got a true shot to take over. I'm hoping in year two with them allowing Singletary to move on, even though they did bring in Damian Harris, that they will still allow James Cook the ability to take over in the range of outcomes James Cook if he does end up taking over is just going to be a man amongst boys so great value for him yeah ADP is currently 87 which is is really nice going in round seven uh, I think math kind of fuzzy but the, the Bills ran the ball uh, or somewhere around 26 attempts a game, which is 16th most. So right in the middle of the NFL. I mean, potential bell cow back has the talent. Jason, to your point, has the draft capital. So why not? I mean, Josh Allen might steal some goal line carries. And some of those rushing numbers are inflated because of his scrambling. But still, who cares if you can yeah. get a potential guy that, that's going to get, you know, 15 touches a game? You can't discount it. 100%. Do you have any uh, sleepers? Do I? Oh. Way back, way deep sleeper to start it off. Nico Collins. Ooh. Here we go, baby. Fantasy Pros, him as, Fantasy Pros has him as wide receiver 52. Ooh. ESPN's PPR cheat sheet has Are him at 58. Me? Oh, my goodness. We, we have them in our low 30s. Uh, again, if you want to get our final rankings, you can go to the fantasyfootballsackos.com. At some point here the next week or two, we're recording this on July 26th. The Sacco sheet will be available, uh, and, and we will have him somewhere in our 30s. His, his current sleeper ADP is 154, which is round 11. 
Wow. It's just too low. It's it's great value. I can't wait to battle out uh, with you in our draft to see who's going to pull the trigger on him first. Yeah, like round He's nine. our number one wide... He's their number one wide receiver. John Mechie's there. Robert Woods are, are there. He's, he's their number one guy. Collins and game script is going to fit them perfectly, right? The Texans, yeah. they're probably going to be bad. They're going to throw the ball a lot in garbage time. So he might not have the touchdown numbers, but he sure as hell is going to have the targets. So Collins ended his season last year uh, after week 14 uh, with a foot injury. Uh, he was injured for a couple of weeks, so he came off or he, you know, missed eight, m- missed weeks eight and nine, came back week 10. Once he came back in week 10, his targets were 10, seven, nine and 10. Brandon Cooks was still there. That's nine targets a week. That translates to 153 a year. I'm a numbers guy. There were five guys that did that last year. Jefferson, Adams, Hill, Lamb and Diggs. Pretty yeah, good. And it's not going to be Davis Mill throwing Davis Mills throwing him anymore either. It's going to be CJ Stroud. Like the quality of pass is going to jump an entire several tiers. Correct. Now I'm not saying that Nico Collins is is one of those five guys that I previously mentioned, but I mean target targets. So he has the pedigree, pick 89 on the 2021 draft. He's 6'4. He ran a 4'4, 240. He has the profile to be a good, like a, a good number one wide receiver. And if he's going to get nine targets a week on a bad team and you can get him in round 11, love the value. Yeah. And, and John Mechie, I think, is the only real competition there. Um, he was uh, the John Cornish Trophy uh, winner twice prior to being drafted by the Texans in the second round. So some good draft capital there. Uh, but Mechie did sit out his rookie season last year after being diagnosed with leukemia. Um, so just hoping that he's healthy. Um, outside of that, I mean, it's still in effect his rookie year. Like there's going to be an adjustment period. So I think Nico definitely has the best chance to take over. But frankly, I don't believe that uh, Woods remotely has the ability left, a talent left, no. to take yeah. over as somebody's wide receiver one and, and be productive or anything meaningful. So Nico Collins, man, great position Love. for him. Love the value. So those four games, again, where he had all those targets, half PPR scoring, 13.4, 7.3, 7.4, and 11. Two touchdowns in those weeks. It's... That translates to being a flex, a flex player, and you're you're getting him in around eleven. So fantastic value, love it. He's going to go late. You can get him for a buck uh, in your auction drafts if you do one. And he's a guy that's going to outperform his draft position, no doubt about it. Yep. And guys, we are going to have something great for you again this season. That's right. The Sacco sheet is making a return. Uh, it will be for sale on the fantasy football sackos.com. That's right. Our website, you'll be able to go to the shop in just a couple short weeks here and get your very own Sacco sheet so you can kill drafts uh, and, and destroy leagues next year. My brother drafted off of the Sacco sheet, did not do one single ounce of draft prep, used the Sacco sheet in our league of record and won. And beat us. And beat (laughs) us with our own, using our, I mean, it just shows that it works. Like literally, I was not offended. I was like, yo, I basically, we basically drafted your team for you and you beat us. So congrats to you. 